Welcome, my name is Max Olsammar. This is part one. I will first talk about four-stroke engines with turbocharging, then about the Otto, Atkinson, Miller and Budak cycles. Then I will talk about the free piston linear generator, the Ilmor five-stroke engine, and finally the Olsammar engine. This picture shows a one-cylinder four-stroke engine. Air comes in from the left, exhaust leaves on the right. There is one exhaust pulse, then an intake stroke, a compression stroke and a power stroke. It's problematic to fit the turbo to this engine, as the exhaust stroke driving the turbo is not in phase with the intake stroke needing air. The uneven exhaust pulse also causes extra stress on the turbo. An engine with a large cylinder volume has enough torque and doesn't need a turbo. A small engine has too little torque and will therefore need a turbo. The turbo consists of two parts. The turbine that is driven by the exhaust gas and the compressor that is driven by a shaft connected to the turbine. A small turbo will spool up fast, but it lacks capacity at higher RPMs. A large turbo has good capacity at higher RPMs, but will not help at low RPMs. The temperature will increase when you compress air. Many turbo engines are therefore fitted with an intercooler that will cool the air and make it denser. A small turbo cannot handle all exhaust at high RPMs. These turbos are therefore fitted with a waste gate that will lower the pressure and volume of exhaust to the turbine. This is a waste of energy, but waste gates are needed to protect the turbo from overheating. They also prevent the buildup of back pressure in the exhaust manifold. Too much back pressure will prevent the cylinders from breathing out. The cylinders will then overheat and the air-fuel mixture will ignite too early. This is called engine knock. A large turbo will give too much air and can also cause the cylinders to overheat and cause engine knock. There are several ways to prevent this. One way is to add less fuel, but then we lose power and the oxygen-rich mix will create harmful nitrogen oxides in the exhaust. Another way is to lower the pressure by using a blow-off valve. This will cause the engine to lose power, but the exhaust will be just fine. Some manufacturers are therefore using a third method, where too much fuel is added to the air-fuel mixture. This creates maximum power for the engine as boost pressure is maintained and all oxygen is burned. But it's very wasteful as the excess fuel used to cool the engine cannot burn and is wasted. There are ways to prevent this, but that will be discussed later. The Otto cycle has the same stroke volume for compression and expansion. It gives good power, but it's not very fuel efficient. The Atkinson cycle keeps the intake valve open a little longer, so that some air is pushed out again. The compressed volume will then be less than the volume expanded. This is more fuel efficient, but gives less power than the Otto cycle. The Miller cycle is the Atkinson cycle with supercharging, to compensate for less power than the Otto cycle. The Budak cycle closes the intake valve earlier, so there is less air to compress, and the result is similar to the Atkinson and Miller cycles. This is the free piston linear generator. It's a compact design that could work as a range extender for electric cars. It works as a generator during the power stroke and as a motor during the compression stroke for a two stroke design. For a four stroke design, it will also work as an engine during intake and exhaust stroke. A four stroke design can have smaller compression volume than expansion volume and therefore be fuel efficient. A two-stroke design is more powerful for the same size. Studies have shown that it's important with low moving mass for efficiency. One problem is therefore to build a lightweight linear generator motor that's powerful. 
Another problem is to build an electronic controller that can efficiently switch between engine and generator mode and also adapt to fast variations in the combustion dynamics. A piston connected to a normal crankshaft has a fixed top dead center and a fixed bottom dead center, but a free piston does not. Power electronics will control its top dead center and bottom dead center to give the correct compression and expansion ratio. This is an inline two cylinder four stroke engine. First there is an exhaust pulse from the left cylinder and then from the right cylinder. It's more suitable for a turbo than the one cylinder engine, but the exhaust driving the turbo is still uneven. There is also vibrations as the two pistons move in tandem up and down. You therefore need counterbalances on the crankshaft. The torque is also uneven and you therefore need a heavy flywheel. This adds rotating mass and makes the engine less responsive. This is the Ilmor 5-stroke engine. It was invented by Gerhard Schmitz in the year 2000. The idea is to add an extra exhaust cylinder, but there is no combustion in this. This cylinder will first be powered by exhaust from the left combustion cylinder and then from the right. Ilmor Engineering has built a working prototype, but they haven't shown this to be more efficient than other engines. There is an advantage with the extra expansion volume that should give better fuel efficiency, but I believe that the extra valves and the extra large exhaust cylinder are negative to the efficiency. I also believe that this design is not good for the turbo, as you still have two exhaust peaks, but they are weaker and they have been moved 180 degrees. There are, however, advantages with this design. The extra piston counterbalances the other pistons, and the extra torque from this piston evens out the torque curve. This is the Ulsamar engine. If we compare it with the Ilmor engine, we see that the exhaust cylinder is smaller and there are no extra valves. The idea with the Ulsamar engine is that half of the exhaust shall flow directly to the turbo, while the other half is pushing down the exhaust piston. This way we can divide the two exhaust peaks from the combustion cylinder into four smaller exhaust peaks that will be driving the turbo. We will therefore get the advantage of the Ilmer engine, but with a smaller exhaust piston and without the extra valves. We will also get better performance from the turbo. To the left in this picture are three combustion cylinders in line behind each other. They drive a crankshaft and it's connected to a second crankshaft in a 2 to 3 ratio. When the first crankshaft rotates two times, the second crankshaft will rotate three times. A single exhaust cylinder can then serve three combustion cylinders. If we look at the blue exhaust curve from the combustion cylinders and combine this with a yellow curve from the exhaust cylinder, we can see that this together creates a very smooth gas flow to the turbo. This is an inline six cylinder engine. Cylinder one and six move up in tandem, cylinder two and five move down, and cylinder 3 and 4 are at the top dead center. One would think that the exhaust from a 6 cylinder engine would be as smooth to the turbo as from the 3 plus 1 cylinder engine I showed before, but that's not true. The exhaust from cylinder 6 has just started and the pressure is much higher than the exhaust left in cylinder 3. Exhaust from cylinder 6 will therefore prevent cylinder 3 from breathing out properly if they are mixed. Six cylinder engines are therefore designed with two turbos, or one twin scroll turbo that separates pulses from different cylinders. This is a press picture from Mercedes before the 2014 Formula One season. It's a V6 engine with three cylinders on each side. And you can see three primary exhaust tubes merge into a common collector tube that's connected to one inlet in a twin scroll turbo. The three primary exhaust tubes have the same length and are tuned to give resonance at a certain RPM where they help the cylinders breathe out better. This second picture shows the actual engine used by Mercedes during the 2014 season. Here we can see a compact log style exhaust with thermal insulation. This gives higher pressure to the turbo at all RPMs and this compensates the loss of efficiency gained at certain RPMs by using a tuned exhaust with long primary tubes. The idea with the Ulsamar engine is to have a compact exhaust 
with an exhaust piston that will give resonance at all RPMs. This picture shows three combustion cylinders to the left. To the right is one exhaust cylinder with a free piston linear generator that can also work as an engine. This allows us to smooth out the exhaust pulse before they are sent to the turbo. But it also allows us to shift phase of the exhaust piston. The pulses are then amplified and this gives sharper and more powerful pulses to the turbo. This is not fuel efficient, but it helps the turbo to spool up faster and can be used during acceleration. When there is no longer need for extra energy, we can smooth out the pulses again and the linear generator will give us electricity to store. Powerful pulses are useful when the exhaust flow is lower than the design limit for the turbo. But smooth flow is better when you get close to the limit. This design will therefore help the turbo from low flow to high flow. It's also possible to use a free piston design for all combustion cylinders, but it's much easier to only use a free piston for the exhaust cylinder. There's less force on the exhaust piston, so the piston and the moving part of the linear generator can have a low moving mass, which is efficient. The exhaust piston will also generate electricity every second stroke, which is better than a four-stroke combustion cylinder that will only generate electricity during one out of four strokes. There is also less demand on the electronic controller, as the control of the exhaust piston is not critical to the combustion. I therefore believe that it will be relatively easy to build this 3 plus 1 design. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and thank you for your time. If you'd like to know more, then contact me on this email address, mats at olsammar.se. You can also have a look at my next video, part 2. Thank you.